growing up out of out of all the people you know um, that I grew up watching my grandfather <clears throat> passed when I was a little boy he was a pastor uh, they had a church my grandmother was the mother of the church you know whatnot and uh, of course you know I, I think I've shared my testimony where my mom and dad said well we were drugged to church because they parents drugged them so we're not gonna do that to our kids and, but my grandmother reached back a generation and drugged me. But one of the things that I grew up thinking, because I wasn't taught, my grandmother could do no wrong in my eyes. I, I, I'd never seen her curse, I'd never seen her get drugged, I never smoked, none of that stuff. And so in going to church, it was almost the unspoken thing that if that's righteousness, I can't reach that mark right there. I might as well just go on and you know the old saying, go on, live your life, have all the fun, and then when you get old, go ahead and uh, come back to God. Yeah. And so my sister Drew, she remember, she would go to church. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so uh, grandma didn't, she gospel music all the time, wasn't no filth on her TV, you went for the brain on up in her house. When I say like this, I'm, you, you magnifying glass. Okay, Grandma, surely she got the, so, nothing. Yeah. People go off, she just be, oh, just pray for him, baby. My grandma, she just like, no, baby, don't worry about it. She say what she say. God will take care of it. Mm. I'm like, no, man, I'm you in the flesh. <laughs> you know, but so I grew up with a concept of righteousness as a level that could be obtained through me working, through me doing. So I, and that, I, I, and instead of going to God, I turned from God thinking that I could, uh, that's not something that I could do. Even in, even in the church, nobody really taught. It was almost like God is good all the time. And, doom, 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 and okay, God is good all the time. Righteousness and, and God is a righteous God and he's holy. And you can't. So I'm thinking, okay, well, if this is a righteous God, he's holy. This is my example. There's no way that I can live up to this. I'll do it later because there ain't no way I could obtain that. Right. It wasn't until years later, and I'm sitting in the, in, the, in the county jail, and I've given my life to the Lord, and I start to study his word. And some of the simplistic principles of God's word started you, you read something all this time where you hear something and then it just it's like it jumps off the page and it's like it liberates you once I got a hold of what righteousness is that Jesus had done it all and that I could never obtain I could never do anything to observe it or live up to it that it was a free gift man my soul was liberated it was like a burden that was on me. Seriously, I felt like, man, I can't do this. You talking about I got to live like this woman over here? Girl, no, I can't do that. I can't. And so it was like a burden that was lifted off of me. And the enemy, it was like the enemy had tricked me. Like, Johnny, yeah, you can't do that. Come on, go on over to the club. Did you... You think you finna live up to that? No, man. Go to the club. Go on party. Go on hang out with the girls. Go, you know, because that, that, that life ain't for you. Yeah. But God gave me a liberating experience. That's what we're talking about today. And, 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 and sometimes what happens is people won't teach on the liberty of God because it's almost the unspoken, like as if somebody's going to take this liberty and now go out and just take it as a license to sin. And Paul said, shall we continue in sin? Even though we're, I'm paraphrasing. Shall grace, he said, shall we continue to sin even though grace has abounded? He said, no. And so one of the things that, that, I, that I recognize, in my, and, I, and I can only speak from my personal experience, me being saved, I don't want to do that stuff. So I, I can't understand the concept of somebody would thinking, well, you can't teach this because they'll want to. And I said, well, if they got the same God that I got on the inside of me, they're not going to want to. And if they do want to, then they need to question whether or not they were truly converted. Right. Question that. I didn't get married, so I, oh, well, now I got you now, so let me go on out to the strip club. Let me go and get four or five girlfriends. No, this is marriage. And so in marriage, there's a relationship, and I don't want to do those things. 
And so even when, even if there is a discrepancy or conflict or anything, I quickly want to repent and get it right because I don't want, I don't want to upset her. I don't want to do anything against her. I don't want to do anything that would hurt her. And so it's the same thing. A father and son relationship, a child relationship. So we're going to look at this thing called liberty because what it did for me is it made me want to submit. Once you're overcome with the awesomeness of his glory and once you see, see, I tell people you got to really get an understanding, a revelation of what he saved you from. When you get a revelation of what you were saved from, you're going to submit. When you get, a, it's, it's like you're overcome. Sometimes break you down into tears. You don't know why you cry because you say, no, I know what I was. I know where I could be. I ain't never been to hell, but I've sure got a glimpse, revelation of what it's like to be eternally separated from God. It's not the heat. It's not the flames. Not that I can say I experienced, but that eternal separation from God. I can't imagine that. Right now, we can pray without ceasing, and we know that we have a relationship and that he hears us. I can't even imagine a, a, a time when you pray and there's no community. It's, 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 you're separated. That's what hell is. You're separated eternally. Ain't no, Lord, help me, save me, give me another chance. There's no discord. There is no discussion. And so when we look at that, it leads us to submission. Well, we want to teach some things this morning. Faith working through love. So that we have the scriptural foundation of this. Faith working through love. Galatians 5, verses 1 through 6, and then we're going to jump down <clears throat> to 13. Stand fast, therefore... In the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Stand therefore, stand fast therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ, he's made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. That's, that's sin. I don't want to, I, I don't, that, I, I, I can, I, again, I can only speak for myself. I, when I hear curse words now, it, it's something on the inside of me. It just churned. But it's like, that's, how, that's the only way I can explain it. Before, I used to be bumping and everything. Like, I, you know, I'm in the club. They yelling out all kind of explicit. It didn't bother me. It didn't bother me. I, I thought that that was freedom, but I was in bondage. I thought that was freedom to 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 want to go to this club and that club, and it had to be driven by my desires, my flesh. I thought that that was freedom. I'm free, man. I'm you know, I'm doing my thing. You know what I'm saying? But I was in bondage. That's the blindness that the enemy had. So now it says, stand therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. He did it, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. There's a scripture, and I can't remember where it was, but he says someone that returns to sin is like a dog returning to his vomit. I don't know if anybody that throws up and says, let me go make a bowl of it and go ahead and eat it. That sounds disgusting. That, but, but God had to put it in those terms. Like, you going back, it's like you turning back to your own vomit. That's what we have to realize when we're talking about liberty and we're evangelizing the people. Behold, Paul, behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. There are some people that were trying to creep into the church and trying to get people to go back into Judaism. They were trying to add to what Jesus had already done. Jesus said it is finished. Jesus said by grace you are saved. Jesus said that, that, that it is not of works, lest any man should boast, because anything that I can do now represents an issue that the devil knows that you can never make. So even, instead of it becoming an encouragement, it was a discouragement. And the enemy knows that. So what happens is, in the church sometimes, we have people that present themselves in a mountaintop type of, I call them mountaintop testimonies. We don't, we don't keep it real. And, and, and so what it, is, what it does is, instead of it, instead of it doing what, 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 what it needs to do, it gives people a false sense of humility. 
I, I want to walk around like, yeah, you know, I've been serving the Lord for, you know, I pray every Monday, every Friday, uh, and I'm glory be to God. And then you, we get the people thinking like, oh, now it's me. I want the glory. Instead of saying, no, brother, I was, my righteousness on my best days as a filthy rat. I still have to submit to the spirit. It's the spirit. So now I give the Holy Spirit glory where it's due. Everything that you see right in me, it comes from him. Submission. The liberty that I have. Submitting to it. If you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. In other words, if, you, if you're doing something, then, then the, the cross has, has profited you nothing. Pharisees, Sadducees, y'all got the ceremonies, y'all got everything down. But if, you, and if you're doing it, then, then, then Christ, it profits you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to the whole law. That's one of the things that I love about the word of God. And see, if you want to, you, you, if you offend in one point, you are guilty of all. If you're going to keep one of them, go and keep the mother 600 and something of them. Go ahead and keep all the rest of them. If, you, if you're saying you're going to do this, 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 and this, okay, well, it's 600 more. Go into Leviticus and look at all them laws. Christ is become, <coughs> excuse me, no effect to you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. Justified by the law, Just, my, my my justification, my my living right, my my being right. It's it's me. Look at look at me. I'm doing it. I'm flying. I'm I'm, I'm doing whatever it is that I'm doing. No 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 no. Look at Jesus. And see when we when we when we, Jesus is the great equator. Everybody's the same level at the foot of the cross. When we do that and we point to Jesus, now it gives the next person the encouragement to come. Because now they know that it's not on them. I thought that it was on me. And for years, the enemy had me blinded. For years, I'm like, it's going to be on me. And I'm going to fail. And I ain't going to be able to do it right. Grandma and God and all these elders and these mothers in the church. They got it right. Nobody teaching me what righteousness is. Nobody teaching me what justification and all of those things. And nobody's laying, making it level like me. And somebody could have came to me and said, brother, I know I've been a deacon in the church. And I've been serving for 60 years. But if you came to Jesus today. Your righteousness is no greater than mine. He don't love you no more. I wish somebody had a came and told me that, but that's why God took me down the road he did. So that we could be the ones, that I could be the one to tell the brother on the street corner, your, your righteousness, your being in the kingdom of God is nigh. That's what Jesus was saying. The kingdom of God has come nigh to you. And even into your lips, even into your mouth, confession with the mouth and believing in the heart leads to salvation, which leads to when you get it right, which is basically doing, confessing it, believing in your heart, it leads to submission. It don't lead to riotous. You don't, don't want to do that stuff no more. Not from the heart, not from the spirit. You, you messed up inside. I, you know, I, just being saved and I'm in the word and everything, and you know, some, you, you still got to renew this mind. Sometimes stuff fly out, but when that stuff fly out, it ain't like you... you you don't feel the same. You don't just do it, and man, I said it. I said what I got this. No, 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 no. That thing mess you up on the inside. Brother, forgive me. Sister, forgive. I didn't mean to say that. I, I'm sorry. I, and first, Lord Jesus, forgive. You feel a particular way because your heart is now tender. That's the liberty that leads to submission. For we... Through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Righteousness comes by faith. Grace is the source. Faith is the channel. By grace you are saved through faith. <clears throat> for if Jesus Christ, for in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Our faith works by love. Our faith works by love. And I'm going to get to that later. God is so much more concerned about our motive for doing things than the, the, us doing it. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, they were doing something. On the outside, they were performing the ceremonies, but their motive for doing it wasn't right. And God said, just because you're doing something, doesn't mean that I honor it. I want to know why you're doing it. If you're doing it to honor me from your heart, I will accept it. 
Cain, <laughs> Cain and Abel, the sacrifice. I won't get into that because that's a whole other teaching, but the principle is from the heart, presenting something to God, presenting something to God from the heart that is truly, truly, sincerely from my heart. I'm just doing it because I want to do it. I'm not doing it because I'm trying to get merits and there, there's checks in the box. Yes, there's rewards in heaven and, 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 and we're working towards that, but we're working for a loving God because of our relationship. Verse 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. But love, but by love serve one another. You've been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for a case. Paul is saying, don't use this as a license that just because you've been given liberty in Christ, that you're just going to do all of this other kind of stuff. All right, well, well, Jesus got me. It's on the cross. No. Then you got to go back and say, well, well wait a second. Did I get this right? Because if I if I could just curse and, and kick people and, put, and do whatever, and then, well, God going to forgive me. So if I got that in my heart, I need to question myself. Lord, why do I feel this way? Because I should be when I miss it. All of sin and fall short of the glory of God. We're going to miss it even in the future. My motive should be as in a relationship. I don't go to and say, you know what? Uh, I got three phone numbers, but I, we married. So you're going you know, you to go ahead and you know, so forgive me. So you know, I'm going ahead. No, she's going to be like, what do you mean? What are you? <laughs> she probably say something else. <laughs> well, uh, but she's not going to, uh, because, because we got a certificate of marriage, because, and that's what Jesus is married to the, to the, to the, to the bride, married to, the, you know what I'm saying, married to us. But we don't take that as an occasion, okay, now nah, I got you, Jesus, let me go ahead. And, yeah. No. <laughs> but by love, serve one another. Again, leads to submission. Legalism versus relationship. <clears throat> Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Then 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also, and I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, but privately to them, which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or have run in vain. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, <clears throat> was compelled to be circumcised. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in who came privately, privately but it's privately to privately, 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 privately okay, I thought it was old English <laughs> so I thought it was privately uh, to spy out <coughs> our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus that they might bring us into bondage to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Have this experience personally. Um, as I said in the past, I have friends that are pastors, evangelists, and this, that, and other. Doctrinally, some of us, we don't see the same way on certain things. <clears throat> Some people see way off and I just like, oh, I got to pray for them because Lord Jesus, you know. But there's a brother, long story short testimony, there was a brother I was working with and um, Lady Brown remembers this. Um, brother was deep in, deep into the work. I mean, like he was, he was, he was into the word and you know, uh, you know, I never really talked with him much. 
you know, outside, because on the job, you only got, you know, but so long, and then after, but we started, you know, meeting, because brother was like, man, I love what you're doing, and, and I see you going out in the community, I want to meet with you one day for coffee, you and your, you and your wife, and we just going to sit down, and we just go get into the Word of God, I said, okay, brother, let's, let's set it up, let's, you know, so we went out for coffee one day, and he had his Bibles and everything, had books and everything open, and he started talking about the word of God, but he had started talking about the word of God in a way that I hadn't heard before. Not, 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 not that I hadn't heard before. I tell you that I, I had heard it before, but I was shocked that he believed this particular way. He was trying to tell me that we should, we should still be keeping the Sabbath and all these ceremonies and everything, and that God is not pleased if we're not doing this, 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 and this, and these ceremonies are so important, and this, that, and other. And I said, wait, whoa, whoa. So I'm listening. You know, and, I, and, I, and I'm quick, I, I can say I understand. I won't always agree, but I can understand where anybody coming from. I understand why you get that from there. I understand why you say that. I understand why you see that in scripture. I understand. But there was something in me that said, ah, something that it was legalistic. I had been around Seven Day Adventists and people like that who, who they, they got the Bible, but then they add some other stuff on and the other stuff becomes bondage. Come to find out that, um, him and his wife had become kind of separated on this issue. God had given them a revelation. We had been praying for them. And God gave them a revelation of the liberty which is in Christ. Say, you, know, you, you can do things, but those things aren't making you righteous. There's a difference. There's a difference. Ah, okay, I can take communion today, but communion ain't going to make me righteous. Keeping, keeping that ain't going to make I, I, I can I can recognize and observe certain things that are in the word of God, but they're not making me righteous. I'm not doing this so that I can obtain a right relationship with, with Jesus. Jesus already took care of that. So for me to say, Jesus, you on the cross plus anything is cheapening the grace of God. And so I'm telling, I'm, I'm communicating with this brother. You know, I, I don't, you know, grace, and you know, I understand, brother. We should, and, but, but, but I'm not righteous because of that. You're not going to put me back into bondage. And it reminds me of this scripture. The, the, they, they, they ended up. One of the uh, young ladies, but before his wife ended up coming to the church because she was like, "Listen, God told me not to go stay in that. I'm not staying in that. God told me to come here. They ended up moving back to, you know, ended up moving back to Texas, but." I saw this brother a couple of years later, broke my heart, completely turned away from God. On, and we the Yuhuru and the Eurasians and the black and this and, and the all C and I and all of this other kind of stuff. But see, that's the trick that the enemy wants to lay on people. Anytime you think that you can do it, the enemy will wear you down. The whole point is to get you to run away from God. Try to get you to run away from God. Jesus said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. So it's through submitting to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, when I submit to him, he does the work through me and not the other way around. And so when it's on Jesus and I submit to him, I can do that all day. I can do that 30, 40, 50 until I break. But when it's on me, and I'm trying to do all of these things in order to attain righteousness. The enemy has got me in a trap. That's what Paul is talking about right here. But neither Titus, who was Greek being, was with me being a Greek, who was compelled to be circumcised, and that because of false brethren, unawares that brought in, who came in privately to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ. That they might bring us into bondage. I see you doing different things. I see in the word of God. But, but are you doing X, Y, Z? Because if you ain't doing X, Y, Z, then, you know, God ain't. You still got to do all these things in order to, you know, get that right relationship. But you got to do all these things. False brethren. Legalistic. To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour. That the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Galatians 3, verses 1 through 5. This is so important because the gospel is simplistic. The enemy tries to complicate it, and the reason why he tries to complicate it is because he wants to make it seem as if it's something that someone cannot do. It is something that it, 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 it is something that they can do. 
I don't care if they've been in, uh, in, out in the streets on drugs for the, for the past 25 years, selling dope, rock, whatever it is. Everybody can do this. So we have to be able to teach them and let them know through our personal testimony that we ain't doing nothing. It's him. See, if I point to me, then now you got to, okay, well, brother so-and-so, he doing and I, no, 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 get connected with Jesus. And so here's the, here's the church in Galatia. Paul, oh foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth crucified among you. Galat the, the church of Galatia, y'all, y'all, y'all had it. And then somebody came and twisted it. And now it's almost like a spell has been cast over you. They were like, it's almost like a spell. I've been in some, I've been in some church as, as a young boy, you know what I'm saying? And, and I saw some stuff that God later on said, no, that ain't. I've seen some people vote people in for membership. The church get together and we're going to vote you in. And if, and if everybody on the board don't agree, I'm like, I got to be voted in by some people. With the, and so I saw all of these things. And I said, Lord, I mean, you gonna put man that's on my salvation. I'm going to hell because I know they didn't see me do something wrong. I'm, I'm going, I'm busting it wide open. And so it's like they've been on a spell. They think that it's, they think that it's right. I, I've been, been in a church where they found the water baptism saved. I sat on, a, I sat in front of some elders who have been in a church 30, 40 years. No, brother, uh, we want you to teach in this church, but uh, you got to teach that uh, water baptism is what saves. And uh, the brother was right there. I, uh, I, no disrespect, Pastor, but I, I don't, I, my Bible don't tell you that. Well, no, look at the Bible. It says it right here. <laughs> Jesus alone saves me. I can get baptized as an act of obedience, being a a uh, disciple, that's something that I should want to do. But that's not what's saying. Oh, well, no, I wish you'd reconsider. And then they sent another brother to me, and he came, brought me out to lunch. He got mad, shut the Bible up, and didn't want to talk to me no more and everything. I'm like, where's all this? And I ain't talking about no small. I ain't talk I'm talking about hundreds of people that believe this way. Bewitched. This only will I learn of you. Paul asked, uh, uh, what? God gives people wisdom. He gives, he gives people, he's asking a rhetorical question, but he's asking them in to be so that they would think. Receive ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. He said, how did you get the Holy Spirit? By faith or by the works of the law? Are you so foolish how it begun in the spirit? You, 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 your, 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 your walk, your, 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 your birth, your rebirth began in the spirit. And now are you made perfect in the flesh? Are you made perfect by the things that you're doing? Are, 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 are you made, are, are you strengthening somehow now this relationship? Yes, we can go stronger in our relationship with God. Yes, we can go stronger in the Lord. But it's not by power nor by might, but by his spirit. And so when I recognize that and I put again... That is not, we sung it up, it's not about us, yes. but it's all about Jesus. Yes. That's giving him the glory. Yes. Having suffered, verse 4, so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain. <clears throat> he therefore that ministered to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law? Or by the hearing of faith. He's saying you're seeing these miracles wrought in front of you. You're seeing people healed. You're seeing the lame walk. Is the person that is doing that, performing that, because they're somehow punching the clock for God and he's somehow giving... No, 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 no. The, that's why it says the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. He gives people's gifts, whether or not they use it for his glory or not, that's another thing. So Beyonce can sing a tail off, but then she's going to sing for Jesus. He's, he didn't take the gift back because she, she has the gift. Same thing with people. We see people in ministry. We say, boy, boy that boy got an anointing. 
Oh boy, that you know what I'm saying? This person could could, could preach the church off the, the preach the roof off the church. And he back in the back alley with Susie and Barbara and and, and you're like, what well, happened? It's still the same. It's, 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 he, he gave it to him. He gave it to him. I've seen that before on the church. It's hypocrisy. I've seen the same. You know, a joker pull a blade out in a minute. What are you saying? Man, it's just up here in the pulpit. Hold on, brother. Wait a second. Where's the love of God? I'll show you the love. I'm going to send you to heaven right now. Okay, so it's like you see that. And you're like, well, how can well, God just gives people? He gives it. He, his prayer is that they would turn and get it right. His prayer is that they would get it right. And prayerfully, they don't get struck down. And I've seen some people fall into sickness. Some people get all types of messed up and everything because they refuse to repent. We saw that throughout the scriptures with Saul and, 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 and David and all of these other men of God. Very familiar scripture. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. 8 through 9, for, <clears throat> for by grace ye are saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. If, if, I, if I got something to do with it, I got a reason to stick my chest out. If I got, if I got anything, I, I, I got a reason to stick my chest out. I, you know, I, I, you know I'm, I'm serving the Lord, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, because I, you know, and you know. But no, by grace, ye are saved. By grace. Grace is unmerited favor. That's what saves me. God's grace. That not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. If somebody give you a gift and say, now, nah, happy birthday, here's this tablet, but I still owe $100 on it, so go ahead and <laughs> take care of that. They're going to be calling you tomorrow. And you like, wait a second, this ain't no gift. I got to pay something. It's not a gift. You you gave me a burden. I'm not, it's now attached with a burden. And so gift of God doesn't come with burden. It doesn't come with sorrow. Not of works lest any man should boast in God. The reason why God does that is so that no one can, can point to themselves and glorify in themselves. No one can do that. It's all Jesus. So it's all God. It's, it's, it's all Holy Spirit. And the reason why that is important, again, we got to get people, and when we're talking to people who, who are not saved, and, and even some who are saved who are in bondage, we got to get people to stop focusing on people. Stop looking at pastor so-and-so. Stop looking at mother so-and-so who's been in the church for 80 years. This is your relationship with Jesus. He's able to do the same thing through you that he's doing through that person. Maybe it's not the same talent or gift manifesting, but he's able to do the same thing. It's not a, it's not a, yes, God will elevate people, but he elevates people through their submission to the spirit. And their elevation has nothing to do with them, but the more they submit, the more he elevates. The more they submit, the more he elevates. And when they get up there, they tell you that they got up there by themselves or by their works, they're lying. Anybody that gets somewhere in life and they stick it out their chest like, well, you know, I was so smart and I, you know, uh, I thought about this and I, and I came up with this and, and well, you know, ha, I was over there. And, you know, no, 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 brother. Take the little, you know, ha, ha, and, and give it to the Lord. Tell them that you was lost and you was a wretch and you was a sinner and, 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 and all of this stuff and you was filthy and if it wasn't for the grace of God you wouldn't be where you are because you know what that says to me that's sitting on the back pew God can use me because you attributed it to something outside of yourself and now I'm encouraged instead of discouraged but the moment you put it on effort and works now I can't get there I can't do it I can't do that. Minister been minister for 35 years. And he, yeah, he laying hands on the sick and doing that. But he get that from, you got it from Jesus. And, and I got equal access. Oh, yeah, I'm ready. Come on, let me, let's pray. Give me some of that what you got. So I can do what you're doing. First Corinthians chapter 13. Verses 1 through 3. Our appraisals. Though I speak with the tongue, speak with tongues of men and of angels, 
and have not charity, which is love, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all the mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body, <coughs> excuse me, body to be burned and have not love, it profited me nothing. Love. Love. Goes back to motive. It's saying, I can see a lot of things being done. I could be doing a good thing and have the wrong motive and God is looking at me like, Remember when he said, when you pray, don't pray to, don't pray to be seen by men or to give pe people praise and everything like that. So they were praying, they were doing a good thing, but the motive from their heart was not right. And so God was like, Jesus coined a phrase, they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from. I've seen some people that can sing the roof off of the church. Cross them. They lose their... <laughs> They're ready to fight it. It's just a tater shot to get the heels on. Wait, wait a second. Wait, wait. You was just saying it to the Lord. Now, this is true. true. We actually witnessed this, like, literally. You know what I'm saying? Hey, long story short, but literally, so leading praise. Yeah. But then, you know, something happened, whatever, and now we're ready to fight. Oh, whoa. And the people in the church, like, wait a second. What? You just, you in the parking lot putting that. Vaseline on your face and you're ready to fight. That's the text. See, God, mm -mm. Jesus said, don't, don't do this. Oh, Lordy, body, glory. Uh, sissy, what, what? You, you, like, wait a second. No, that don't know. No. God is so, con God is so concerned with our, the motive of our heart. These are people that are taking tongues, uh, people that prophesy, understand all the mysteries, and all the knowledge, they have faith so that they can remove mountains. But if they have love, they have not love. It, 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 he says, I am nothing. And then it says, the story to give good to the poor, to feed the poor. And though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profited me nothing. You see people, actors, every time they come around, every, every Thanksgiving and Christmas, they in the line and, Oh, bless you. And he's like, oh, you heaping up blessings of God. Like, I don't see that. Where, where you been at the other 10 months of the year? You ain't stepped foot in the church uh, since last Easter. He, you coming in, you think you got, you storing up something in the, but people believe like that. I used to believe like that. Because the old folks used to say, boy, you going to be blessed, boy. You going to church today, boy. You going to be blessed. I still got to lick all my breath from the club last night. You talking about I'm gonna be blessed? Okay, I, I, I thank you. And I and so people get this false this false understanding like it's all about me doing something. And God, no, your motive, your motive. Why are you doing it? You doing it so you can get perfect attendance? You get some no. So men, men will give us a false appraisal of ourselves, and God's like no. Mm -mm. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 1 through 5 <clears throat> <clears throat> Let him in so account of us as the ministers of Christ and as stewards of the mysteries of God. <clears throat> That's what we are. Stewards of the mysteries of God. If you have a revelation, God has given you any revelation of the word of God. You are a steward of that. What does that mean? That means that God just didn't give us a word so that we could sit on it and not share with anybody. Sometimes what happens is, though, we allow people's feelings or whether or not they go uh, get upset or not to allow our stewardship for us not to be able to give the word of God. God gave me something here recently. Showed one of our daughters and I. And it was a dream that came and I won't go into the details. Maybe I'll share a little bit uh, later or whatnot. But God gave me that. 
and I waited because sometimes God will give you something that is not for you to tell. So I'm, I'm obedient. I'm like, okay, God, you showed me that. What do you want me to do with it? I shared it with Lady Branham and she's like, okay. And so I think she went, do you think you had went somewhere, went to the chiropractor or something like that. And I felt this in my spirit, like tell her. And so knowing the personality, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting them, you know, it's probably ain't gonna go over well, but I gotta be obedient. AJ was just doing a study in the Bible about uh, Eli and his and his and his two sons how they were doing wrong and and they didn't and Eli didn't want to tell you know tell his sons you know that you were and so God cursed he cursed Eli he cursed the lineage he cursed everybody I said man God whoa I said then he said nobody in your house gonna get old all because you refuse to tell the truth I, that ain't gonna be me I'd rather you get mad get upset with me then him say oh so i gave you that you were steward steward means caretaker of his word you don't want to do what i tell you to do with the word okay i got something for you i'm not mm -mm. so here it is pray seek god ask him to search your heart he's telling you to remove this out of your life i advise you to whatever Whatever God got me to do, you can get mad and twist up and shout, cuss me out, whatever you want to do, but I didn't deliver the word. I'm sorry. Clean hands, Lord. And so, of course, that's why there's the hesitation of us when we're stewards of the word of God. That's why he told Jeremiah, don't be afraid of their faces. Everybody ain't going to like what you got to say in the way you got to say it, but he said you say it indiscriminately because I'm with you. He said, even when they're ready to attack you because of the word, I got your back. You tell you, I got your back. And so with that, we, we rest easy, okay? Here it is. <clears throat> Moreover, verse 2. It is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Meaning, I'm doing the same. I'm consistent. That's, I, 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 I got to be consistent. I, 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 I got to be consistently doing what God has asked me to do. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not my own self. Paul was saying, I appreciate it. And, you know, and there's nothing wrong with, you know, pastor's appreciation and, and appreciation of this and, and, and 25th anniversary and 10th anniversary. But Paul said, don't give too much value to that. They're not your appraisers. They're not the one that's going to truly evaluate you. Your measure is him. See, people get it twisted. We want to measure ourselves against each other. God says, no, me your measuring stick is Jesus. So when I use Jesus as my measuring stick, as Paul said it, I'm always reaching forward. I'm always, he said, forgetting those things are behind, forgetting those things which are behind, but reaching forward unto the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Jesus is my mark. And as long as I keep Jesus as my mark, I will always be humble because I will never be totally and completely and utterly exactly like him. So that's why Paul was given a warning. He said, listen. It is a very small thing. I appreciate it. Thank you. Everything like that. We don't have to give false humility to somebody. Say, oh, brother, I appreciate what you're doing. I appreciate it. We accept that. But then we also, because that the enemy can come in and try to puff you up. Like, yeah, I am the stuff. I am. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm doing such and such. And yeah, I'm here. Yeah, and, then, and then it's no. <clears throat> I got to equate it in a small sense. Paul said, I don't even judge myself. For I know nothing by myself. He says, if I justify myself, my, my, my understanding is finite, so I'm not even doing myself justice. But he that judges me is the Lord. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart, that every man shall have praise of God. That's why he told the angels with the tares and the wheat, he said, no, I don't need you doing no separating. Because if it hadn't been us, Peter, you you going to hell. You just deny Jesus and curse. And she said, no, I'm still going to use Peter. David, you slept with Bathsheba and had a cousin killed. If it was a council of man, doomed. He would have been to the gallows. 
And so that's why God says, no, leave it up to me. Whenever we'll cast anyone off as, as, as unredeemable, as well, no, nah, there ain't no hope for them, and this, that, and other. And, and, and the love was just she was saying in the Bible study about this generation. Well, this generation, you know, and then you already cursed this generation by saying this generation. This generation can do great things if we would just death and life were in the power of the tongue. So here's the enemy sitting back, keep on cursing them. Because I got some demons to go ahead and can't, that death that you just cast, I'm, I'm, we ready just like death and life. The enemy, there are spirits right here. Right, they're waiting for us to say something. They're waiting for us to say anything other than the word of God. So God is saying, no. Don't appraise them in a negative light. Yeah, he's just pants sagging. Yeah, he got a beer bottle in his hand. Yeah, he got a mouthful of gold. He'd be cursing and all of that other stuff. But he can still be used by me. Don't you appraise him. Because the same one we're appraising, just like a Peter or a David, be the same one that God says, now nah, I'm going to use him just to confound the wise. You thought you had it figured out. You thought that the next evangelist was going to come from Ebenezer Baptist Church, but I'm going to bring him from 5th and 3rd. Out on the corner. I'm going to bring them from the whorehouse. I'm going to bring them from the crack house. You know why? Because I'm going to get the glory that way. I'm going to get some glory that way. All of them. I know a man that she used to strip and she was out and she evangelist. Glory be to God. And so in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 1 through 3. We have to understand that carnality does not mean separation. It just means immaturity. Brethren, I cannot speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal. Notice he referenced them as brethren, but they were carnal. They were brethren, but they were carnal. There are a lot of people that get born again, like I was talking last week, but there's no one there to disciple them. Discipleship is important. That means that that's not the finish line when you give your life to Christ. That's the beginning. So now there's a discipleship thing that has to happen, and it's lifelong. And so we got to give people get people out of this false thing. And, I, and I've seen it where you know people they, they, they raise their hand, and we ought to celebrate when people give their life to Christ. We ought to rejoice, but then we ought to give everybody the charge by listen. This brother just gave his life to Christ. Let's get involved in this life because the enemy coming hard. The enemy is coming to attack. This is not the end. This ain't the finish line. He's got to now renew his mind. And so that's the understanding that we need to have. And that's the understanding that we need to give people. Because he, Paul was speaking to some people who were born again, but they were carnal. Even as unto babes in Christ. He, gave, he said, you're in Christ, but you're carnal. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal. And then he goes and describes whereas among you there's envying. There were, there were envying. There was strife. There was divisions. He says, are ye not carnal and walk as men? He was like, you look like the world. There are some people that are born again, but they look like the world. Still dangerous, but they're in Christ, and so we have to understand where people are, and then we have to be able to pray for people in the proper way, because there's some carnal people that God wants to use. There's some people that, that the enemy has gotten into carnality. They've got their, their, their fleshly. God's saying, I, I still I, I want to use everybody. <clears throat> So there was envy, there was strife, there was a vicious, he called them carnal, and they walked as mere men. And then we jump down in the same chapter, verse 21 through 23. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul, whether Apollos, whether Cephas, or the world, or of life, or of death, or things present, or things to come. All are yours, and ye are Christ, and Christ is God's. Let no man glory in men. Don't, 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 don't glory in men. I always tell people, you know, uh, and, 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 and it's, it's, 
if it's not taught, then it's kind of difficult for people to comprehend. I, I say, um, how do I say it, Holy Spirit? Extraordinary God, ordinary man. God will use us. That's why I pray the way I do. Lord, use me as a spoon or a fork to bring food to the body. It's not me. He was, oh, brother, I what I was. Uh, uh. You know why? Because it would be just as ridiculous as us to go ahead and attribute glory to a fork. The fork is bringing food to the body, but the fork is not the source. The hand is. I'm, a, I'm like a puppet. The Holy Spirit just speaks through me. And so what happens is, oh, boy, I brought up TJ. He's a great man. Oh, boy, another. And then people start to do what they were doing in Corinthians. They were starting to follow because of the personality. They were starting to follow because of they saw the gift and they couldn't separate the gift from God. We got to be able to separate the gift from God because the danger in that is sometimes when the gift uh, when the man of God falls, people attribute that to God and they walk away from the church. People who are immature. Oh, that seemed bad. That man, uh uh, uh no, nah, that bishop so and so, he did such and such with that young girl and man of God ain't really. No, 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 no. Bishop is used by God, but he's not God. Bishop is used by Jesus, but he's not Jesus. Let's make this separations. And so that's what Paul was trying to get them to do. Yes, you hear these men of God. Yes, you hear these women of God. Yes, you hear. But there's a separation. There's a God on the inside of them using them. And now you see this magnificent manifestation. But the glory is attributed to God. And so when we attribute the glory to, when we attribute the glory to God, <clears throat> we understand that we can't allow glory to be attributed to man. Extraordinary God, ordinary man. The hand behind the fork is not the fork. We'd be silly looking up. Oh, fork, thank you for bringing food to my body. You're such a wonderful fork. Oh, my God, you're just whole. Oh, just glory. And, you know, man, your child did you like that. He's like, man, I'm the one brought the, I'm the one was feeding you all those years. How you going to give glory? In the, you know, not to give glory like that. How you going to give a Mother's Day card to a fork? How you gonna give a Father's Day card to a fork? I'm the one did all this stuff, but you attributing glory to the, the same way. We would feel some type of way. Yeah. And God is like, no, nah, don't share my glory. You thank God for that person, but they're not God. And so that's the distinction, and that's what people should be understanding and, 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 and teaching. Wrapping up in just a few minutes. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. <clears throat> First Corinthians 4, verses 6 through 7. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that you might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. So Paul is saying, I don't want you to be puffed up one man against, against another. That was, that was an issue that was, that was going on. For who maketh thee to differ from one another? And what hast thou didst not receive? Now, if thou didst receive it, why doest thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? It's the same thing. God gave me this gift. God gave me this talent. God gave given the glory of, into the, what God is attributed to. It amazes me sometimes how, and, and, and it's almost, it's, a, it's like a, a, a prideful type spirit. It's like with Lucifer. You know what I'm saying? I will ascend to the heavens. I will do this. I will ascend my, uh, uh, my throne above the throne of God. I, 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 I. You know, I started this business, I did this, and I did that, and I built this, and I, and I, and I, and I, 
And Paul is warning against that. He said, if you receive that, he said, so why, since you received it, are you acting like you didn't receive it? Like you like you did something. You ever see those people, they like, well, you know, I, 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 you know, once I left Harvard and then I went on to my military career and uh, I spent 10 years over there in Kuwait and I, I dodged bombs and I uh, shot at enemy combatants. Then later on, I moved to the White House and, and it's like, God ain't help you in none of that? You ain't received the grace of God? All those doors that opened up, you mean to tell me you opened them yourself? That's what God is saying. He's saying, why, since you received it, are you acting like you didn't receive it? Like you did something. That's what Paul is saying. The gift of liberty humbles us. It humbles us. 1 Corinthians 13, 8 through 10 Going back to the love chapter. Charity never faileth. Love never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is done in part shall be done away. Then one of my favorite verses is it goes on to proceed when I thought as a child, I think it's proud, and so on and so forth. But love never fails. Prophecies, there's going to come a time where prophecies, knowledge, and all, we're not going to need that stuff in heaven. We, we're going to know as we're known. That it's, it's for here. That's why he says we're stewards of it. We're stewards of it now because it's needed to bring people to Christ. He said there's going to come a time when that's no longer needed. For we know in part, and even on our, even on our best day, God is saying, even, even, with everything that, even with everything that we know, I used to think, you know, when I looked at certain men of God, that was another thing. When God called me to teach, God, I can't do that. Teach. What? Man, I don't know. Genesis, I couldn't tell you all the 66 books of God. I couldn't tell you that. I don't know what, the, 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 what, the, how the, 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 but, but again, my perspective of where I came out of is on me. Holy Spirit ain't got, I got to be the one to, and i am got to be the one to get the revelation. And I said, no, 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 no. That one that you see up there, and he's been preaching and teaching for 35 years, he got it from me. And even what he got, he only knows a part of it. He only, just, just, just a part. And so, for we know in part, and we prophesy in part, that's why, you know, God will give revelation, but he don't give all revelation. It'll explode our brains, even the ones that are prophesying. Well, God showed me such, such, just that, 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 that. We prophesy in part. But that's just to keep us humble. Not that our brains can contain it anyway. We'd explode. But when that which is, which is perfect has come, then that which is, which is in part shall be done away. Jesus. We're with him. When he comes... <clears throat> There's no longer, we won't need to, we, we, we pray in tongues now, we, we speak in tongues, because there's, we're not in heaven. <clears throat> we get there, there'll be, no, there'll be no need for that. Luke 18, verses 9 through 14. Last scripture. <clears throat> Luke 18, verses 9 through 14. <clears throat> and this is Jesus about to speak a parable. Still talking about liberty that leads to submission. And he spake this parable unto certain which he trusted. Oh, excuse me. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves. That they were righteous and despised others. So this is the he, this is the, the word of God. He said this is the purpose for this. There were some that trusted in themselves that they were righteous <clears throat> of their own accord and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God. I thank thee that I am not as 
other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice a week. I give all the all, excuse me, I give tithes of all that I possess. <clears throat> Here's this Pharisee like, I'm, I'm doing it, God. I, I ain't doing this. I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that. And I do X, Y, Z. This is him. Just basically bragging to God. I'm like, oh, really? And the publican standing afar off would not even so much as lift his eyes to heaven, but smote his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. That's a principle that teaches us liberty leads to submission. The Pharisee, he was doing all of these things, but he attributed it to himself. He attributed it as a work that he was doing that made him righteous. And sometimes the enemy will get people caught up into, because you've done all of these things, and I, and, and I had that, I, 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 God had to get me out of that mindset because I used to think that my blessings came not by grace, that's how we get everything, by grace, but by what I was doing. And, and I, give you the, I give you the illustration, I told this testimony, there came a time where I was ready to go home. God, I'm in the choir, I, I'm praising you, I'm in my Bible, I'm doing all these things. And I'm a law clerk, and I'm seeing people go home. I'm talking to God like I'm talking to you because it was like it was hurting. It was like, why? I'm like, well, why am I doing all this stuff? And I see other people being blessed, but I'm not being blessed. And then God says, no, I'm not going to change your situation. I'm just going to change the way you deal with it. He gave me a Paul. My grace is sufficient. But I didn't understand that. Wait a second. But he brought me to the maturity to let me know, Johnny, even on your best day. Don't you ever think that anything that you do for me was worth my son going on the cross. There is no equation. There is no equality in that. You don't do nothing to deserve nothing. Everything that you get is by my grace. And so with that, it humbled me like, oh, you sent your son to die for me. How dare I even... Lord, I've been doing this for five years or for five months and think that I can just, well, Lord, I, I should be able to tap into like I got some type of bank with God. He said, no, nah, my bank was already filled with the blood of Jesus. I don't need your treasure, your coin. I don't need nothing from you. So now when I do give you something, don't think that you got it because you deserve it. Got it because of my grace and that I love you. So when you tell people, the reason why you got what you got, just tell them it's by the grace of God. Because when you point to you, Johnny, now you're going to have people running around trying to do something in order to earn grace, which you cannot measure the blood of Jesus. And that's what man does. I did this, this, and this, and I got this from God. You hear people tie $500 today, and God, the, the, the devil is alive. If people would just think about what people are saying. You mean to tell me I could pay for a healing? I could, I could, I wouldn't care if it was a million dollars. The blood of Jesus got a price tag on it because that's how we were healed. You telling me that? Prophet, you a liar and the, the truth ain't in you. I'll tell one to his face. You ever come around me talking about something? I'm going to heal such and such, but give me $5,000. No, Jack. The blood of Jesus ain't that cheap. God's healing ain't that cheap. His grace is not that cheap. So when we teach the grace of God, we tell people, serve God with all your heart, with all your mind. Serve your name. Love people. But just know that you don't, God don't owe you nothing. You don't deserve, you want what you deserve? Let's go back here in the book of Revelation. That, that's what you deserve. That's fair. So anything that we get in this life, Anything that we obtain is by grace and by mercy. And so with that liberty, 
Now I'm not led to try to do some stuff in order to obtain I'm led to it just to submit to him because of what he's already done. You've already done enough. I'm finna miss hell because of something that I didn't do. Something that I didn't obtain. Who wouldn't work? If God said, look, I ain't gonna do nothing for you, but you gonna miss hell. Who ain't finna? Well, Lord, I ain't gonna work for that. I'll go to hell. No, you ain't finna, Joe. You finna work. You finna do what you got to do. I, I miss hell. You ain't got to give me no car. You ain't got to give me no job. You ain't got to. I'm, I'm missing hell. This right here is what, 100, 120 years they say by strength sometime versus eternity. I think we got the better end of the stick. I think we got. I think we got the better end of the deal, and that's what God was. That's what God is sharing us, and that's what we are to share with people. Let them know that there is liberty in Christ. That liberty leads to submission. That it's a free gift. That everything that you see in me, brother, everything that you see, I didn't earn it. But yeah, you've been serving God and everything. No, 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 no. I didn't get it because I was serving. I got it because He's a good God. He blessed me because he's good, not because I'm good. He did this, this, and this because he's great, not because I'm great. And so when we give them that picture, then we even the leveling thing at the cross, and they see themselves in the living. Oh, my God, if he blessed Sister Sheila, if he blessed Brother Willie, if he blessed Shante, if he blessed AJ, if he blessed Andrea, then I can do it too. And we take, the, we take away the sting of the enemy. We take away the lie and the trick of the enemy. And we offer people freedom because we didn't pay for ours. At this time, 